Um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and give an, uh, brief introductions for our panelists and then I'll call on them one at a time to go ahead and present to all of you. Um, so we'll first hear from, from Becky Astrup. Um, she's a member of BBC ETC and part of Sharp Hub, and she is a, um, a well-known SBRS TTR program expert. She's given a number of lectures and talks already to, to UNO and UNMC faculty over the past several years, um, and she's, she's very well known in this area. Um, after Becky, we'll hear from Josh Nicolcati. Um, Josh oversees the BAST program, Federal and State Technology Partnership Program at the Nebraska Business Development Center. And Josh has been instrumental in working with UNL UNMC faculty to help them get properly registered small business um, um, concerns to be able to apply for these funding mechanisms. Um, then we'll hear from Dr. Christine Kutsakaki. Um, at UNO. She is the Haddix Community Chair of Science um, and Associate Professor of Biology and, and the Director of the UNO STEM Trail Center where she helps um, uh, faculty apply for grants and then helps them uh, coordinate and she helps oversee and manage those grants when they're awarded. And then finally we'll hear from Joe Rungi, Associate Director at Unitech Institute uh, who's also been working in the SBRS TTR space for a decade or more now. Uh, he has um, some interesting resources over at Unitech, this is the incubator accelerator adjacent to UNMC for UNMC and UNO uh, faculty, um, as well as uh, it's a, a new Kaufman Heartland Challenge grant to help facilitate these applications. And he's working with um, our last presenter will be Nathan Preheim. He's, he's a well-known local entrepreneur and the founder of Proven Ventures. Um, which is a pre-seed venture debt fund designed to catalyze and capitalize high growth companies based in Nebraska. And they have a number of exciting opportunities again to help, um, help, help you guys translate research um, ideas into products and small businesses. So without further ado, we'll hand it off to, to Becky. Always have that unmute issue. Uh, hi, everybody. Thanks a lot for um, having us uh, here, Tyler. And I uh, just wanted to acquaint all of you with some of the services that are available uh, to help you with this program, as well as just tell you a little bit about the program itself. It can be a confusing program, so all these resources that the panelists and Tyler and others have for you, I really recommend that you take advantage of those because it can be a daunting process to undertake by yourself. So, um, you know, use these resources. And for those of you uh, at the university, uh, there are a number of ways you can participate, both as a principal investigator on an STTR, which is small business technology transfer. You can also do subcontracts on a SBIR, small business innovation research. So both programs are uh, available for university and other subcontractor participation, but there always has to be a small business. So before you can apply, you have to have your business formed and have your um, concepts in hand and really understand what problem you're solving for the specific agency that you're approaching. There are eligibility issues that, uh, that those on this call as well as Sharp Hub and BBC can help you identify just to make sure that you meet all the eligibility criteria as you move forward on the program. So, um, just a little bit about Sharp Hub and BBC. BBC ETC Entrepreneurial Training and Consulting has been working in the SBIR space since 1990. And uh, we've worked to essentially to help you pull together your proposals. We do iterative reviews and, and um, work with you on selecting what mechanism to follow, et cetera. And uh, fortunately, we were, ab were able to extend services now to Nebraska companies that are in the life science space due to a grant that we got from National Institutes of Health to help foster innovation in the life science field and bring it to commercialization. So all the services that I just mentioned are available to companies that are based in Nebraska with life science technologies at no charge. So I, I really want to encourage you to take advantage uh, of that because it will help your chances of getting funded. So um, I do recommend also that everybody uh, plan to talk to your program manager before you submit your proposal. And it's a little different whether you're talking a granting agency like NIH or NSF, or if you're talking a contracting agency like Department of Defense. 
So if it, you're interested in Department of Defense, you have limited time period after the, uh, after the topics are issued when you can actually talk to them and you need to be very, very aware of that. With the granting agencies, they're more open and you can talk to the program managers at any time. But either way, it's still uh, extremely valuable for your company and yourself to have those conversations with them and get to know more about what the problems are that they're trying to solve, how they're allocating their funds and you know, use those hot buttons when you write your proposal. So uh, Tyler, is there anything else you particularly wanted me to cover or should we pass it on? No, I think that's a great start, Becky. Um, yeah, um, I think we can go ahead and pass it on. I think the last thing I'd maybe mention, if you didn't hit on it, um, we, we are hoping to, to do another uh, panel. You did such a great job last fall with, with your, your day-long, uh, or two-day, actually, panel, right, on, on, on getting into the nitty-gritty of an NIHS IR application. If we have to do that maybe virtually, um, would there be a possibility this spring or winter? Absolutely. Um, and there's also a lot of training that we're offering through Sharp Hub that again is available to anybody, whether you're in life science or not, uh, that's in Nebraska. So uh, if you take a look at, I think hand, the uh, slides materials will be sent out afterward, but the website is sharpideahub.com. And uh, you can take a look there for um, virtual classrooms and training and other kinds of networking events that are specific to Nebraska as well. So, you know, we invite everybody to take a look there and participate and, and we're happy to bring you into the community of people that we're working with in the state. That's fantastic. Thanks again, Becky. Thank you. Um, we'll, we'll go ahead and pass it on over to Josh Nickel Caddy at the Nebraska Business Development Center. Take it away, Josh. Thanks, Tyler. Um, so I have two slides that will go out um, from Tyler um, after this, um, and they will include uh, both my contact information, um, although I'll put that in the chat as well, um, and uh, some dates that you might uh, uh, want to have on your radar or um, some upcoming events that you'll want to, uh, that you may want to participate in. Uh, one of the things that we're going to do monthly is SBIR 101s, which are just kind of a, a top level understanding of the program uh, that people on this call might find useful um, as they're kind of entering to, you know, dipping a toe into this, into this uh, space. Uh, so that's one that is kind of a monthly touch point for people. Um, that's, those are all administered through more traditional uh, webinar format. So just be on the lookout for those. And if you're interested in participating, then um, reach out to me. Um, and we'll get you on the mailing list for that. Um, and then there's uh, something else I'll, I'll mention in, in, in a minute um, that is specifically geared towards, um, towards the NIH crowd, uh, potentially that's, uh, that's on this call. But uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the Nebraska Business Development Center, uh, we kind of traditionally have about, you know, kind of two divisions. One is the Small Business Development Center, uh, which is your kind of traditional, um, business plan, uh, business model kind of discussions there. How do you form your business? Um, and just kind of the mechanics of, of getting that done. How do you write a business plan? And, and helping people who are uninitiated, who've never formed a business before, kind of figure out how to make that kind of thing happen. Then the other big division that the Nebraska Business Development Center has is the procurement technical assistance folks, which are you know, helping people navigate the government contracting process. What are the registrations that you need to complete? What are the certifications that you need to have to really be able to make, um, to receive, um, uh, you know, federal funding or to, you know, kind of uh, get a contract with, with the federal government or, or other levels of, of, of government, uh, state and local and things like that. So uh, the SBAR program kind of exists at the nexus of those things, which is where kind of I operate, which is that you've got a number of startups, um, uh, researchers and, and things that are affiliated in uh, organizations that are affiliated with the university that are thinking about, uh, I have this great idea. And uh, I think SBAR would be a relevant funding source for me uh, so that's going to involve some government contracting, potentially, if you're working with Department of Defense or the receiving federal funds. Um, so those are going to require certain very specific registrations that our, our government contracting folks are, are very adept at, at helping to navigate. 
And then also in many cases, somebody needs to form a small business in the first place, especially in, this, in the SBIR phase or, or work with a small business um, who is otherwise uninitiated. So that's really my role is kind of um, existing through the, the federal and state um, technology program, uh, the FAST program, to then kind of bring those, bring those uh, skill sets together. Uh, so, and to really help a uh, nascent business really kind of fig figure those kinds of things out. Um, so, uh, our office would provide market research, uh, pretty top level, but again, that's for people who just, you know, they're, they're adept at research, but typically from an academic perspective. So, from just figuring out the market potential for this, for this idea, it doesn't need to be, you know, like, in you know incredibly in-depth market research but it's just something that um a lot of uh people that that i work with especially who are affiliated with the university just don't have as much experience with so that's something that we do again helping with the the registrations those necessary registrations that are required for them to actually contract with um contract or or receive a grant from various agencies and then to also find kind of appropriate solicitations or appropriate opportunities, whether those are with the state or whether they're with the federal, um, gov uh, federal government, and then an appropriate agency within, within uh, the, the broader SBIR program. So that's really um, kind of what, what we help a small business uh, or a, you know, a, a researcher do, whether it's form a small business, receive, uh, find an appropriate solicitation, then um, help them with the market research that's required to go into that application and then actually navigate the process by which they need to submit the thing. So we work closely with, with Sharp Hub there to provide trainings. Um, again, our services are available at no charge and really only go so far. Um, so uh, we've got a lot of people who are, who are interested in this and that, that's something that through the innovative ecosystem and the partnerships that we've developed over the course of the last few years um, have really um, helped to grow, I think, local, local and statewide demand for, for the services that we offer um, and knowledge about the SBIR program. And while that's been really great, uh, then we need to rely on each other to help to kind of deliver those services also to make sure that everyone gets the services that they need so that they can successfully man uh, navigate the process. So, and it, like Becky said, is rather involved. So, um, so that's where we all kind of collaborate um, as best as we can to, to uh, make sure that um, people who are uh, uh, ready and, and able and, and can really make a difference within the, the innovative ecosystem, especially within the life sciences, uh, can, can receive the funds and then make, be that, that next generation innovative business um, within, within our community. So, so that's our goal. I think we all have kind of a, a shared set of goals here in terms of trying to um, seed and support those next generation innovative businesses. Um, and I think especially the research that's being done at UNMC and across the university system is really exciting in that realm. And are all and many of the people on this call, I'm sure most have an idea that certainly could be uh, an SBAR STTR opportunity. And we're all here. Um, me in particular is uh, is here to provide either the training or the individual support to make that possible. So, thank you, Josh. Just a quick question, um, just you know, kind of ballpark. How many faculty would you say that you engage with from UNMC and UNO on a yearly basis the last few years that are interested in, in this? Um, so uh, last kind of year, because we spot. put together, oh, no, no, because we put together that, uh, that cohort with Sharp Hub, um, I think we, we had a goal of 20 for just the, you know, the, the January through March engagement. And then I would, I don't know, I bet we added uh, at least a half a dozen more, you know, that weren't, that didn't quite fall within that. So, um, so probably two dozen, that was our first year for it. So maybe we had kind of a backlog of demand potentially. Um, but I, I feel comfortable saying, you know, um, at least a dozen, if not uh, 20 or so faculty who I, who I regularly speak with, check in with and, and see um, how, how their projects are going. Fantastic, yeah. So this is not at all uncommon. There's a lot of faculty thinking about their research or augmenting their research funding with these types of funding opportunities. 
Okay, fantastic. Um, we will, uh, thanks again, Josh. We will pass it off now to Dr. Christine Kutsakaki over at the UNO STEM Trail. Thanks, Tyler. Yeah, I think that's a really good segue too, because I am at UNO and uh, I went to UNMC for graduate school, so I'm not so far removed from our friends there. And I've really enjoyed working with so many of you in preparing market research. Josh does a lot of that for us. We very much appreciate that. But also Tyler and the whole Unimed crew always helping us to understand what is protectable, if that's a word, and how we can file appropriately and, and what is good to turn into a business and what is not. Um, so I always appreciate your candid conversations there and just really wanna echo that sentiment of sometimes faculty are really worried about potentially overstepping their role and moving into the business realm or collaborating on something like an SBIR, STTR and yeah, you've, you've captured exactly the, the need for this and funding agencies, program officers will tell you that they want to be able to see you know, major NSF or NIH grants then turn into small businesses that can be used to support everyone. So it's certainly a timely conversation and appreciate being part of that today. I'm gonna to put some resources in the chat as well. We really fall in the people realm, I think for the SBIR, STTR. You've heard my colleagues talk about some of the great resources that they provide already and, and you'll hear even more um, after I'm finished telling you a bit more about what we offer. And so I'm excited about students and I'd really like to see students develop their own businesses and innovate and contribute to the Nebraska economy. So certainly I want them to learn, I want them to do research, I, I want them to do all of the things they should do as students, but why not have as many opportunities at the end of the day as possible? So as faculty, we can work with folks like Unimed or uh, NBDC to capture new ideas and give students the opportunities to lead those. So the idea that we have at the STEM Trail Center, the STEM Teaching Research and Inquiry Based Learning Center, it's a mouthful, is all surrounding this idea of experiential learning. Students learn most from experiencing things, right? So if, if students can be a part of the invention, the development, the marketing, the writing of an SBIR, and then ultimately serving as sort of a part-time CEO to see if they like it or if they want to exit at graduation, um, then they'd have that opportunity. So our big goal is to provide opportunities for students and, as middle schoolers learning how to do data analysis and um, develop computational thinking skills through things like gene expression profiling, mining for diagnostic and prognostic outcomes, and then being able to develop that into either an SBIR or STTR, all with the student taking ownership of that. Obviously, there's this massive support mechanism of the folks on this call, and so it's a, it's a safer venture for students but we're really interested in helping to cultivate students who are interested in developing these processes, um, particularly in the biosciences of which all of us reside. Um, sometimes it can be unclear what additional pathways are out there aside from be a professor or be a medical doctor. And I didn't think I wanted to be either of those. <laughs> and I'm not sure that I am either of those at this point. But the whole idea is to give students that experiential learning so that they can see if maybe they want to be a business owner or perhaps they want to work at a university and do research, but really partner with a business to see what they develop actually translated to bedside or in the case of a lot of our stuff, um, we work on ed tech also. So certainly we have the, the biomed stuff, but there's a whole new realm of ed tech and developing games to improve cognitive um, learning and connect with students at various levels. So Unimed's been really great just to help us with that stuff too. Same with NBDC. So um, the, the sky is the limit, so to speak. So we're really focusing on the people aspect and helping to connect with people. Thanks. Thank you, Christine. That's fantastic. Um, and yeah, you, you've, you've helped build this invaluable resource over at UNO. So thanks a lot. Okay, uh, we will go ahead and pass it off uh, now to Joe Rungi, Associate Director of Unitech. Go ahead, Joe, take it away. 
Thanks, Tyler. Um, I think there's been a lot of great overviews for the SBRST TR program. Um, it is, a, I think, a real gem uh, in the United States. It's a program unlike any other in the world and one that probably has yet to reach its full potential. So I think that the uh, intentional way in which all the people on this call are trying to aggregate resources to inventors and academics is, is really admirable. Um, one of the things to keep in mind is more and more the different agencies that are pursuing SBRSTTR are really diversifying the programs. NSF's SBR program is very different than the NIH. And the, the qualities of a good application in one is, is quite different than the other. And so I think that it's not just a question of do I want to file an SBR or an STTR. It's also a question of what agency and sort of engaging that. So I really echo Becky's comments that it's important to speak with the program officers to really get a sense of that agency is in a way your customer for the proposal that you're writing and you want to write something that's going to be as relevant as possible for them, not just something that's going to be uh, interesting to the study section that goes along with it. Um, at Unitech, we were funded uh, through the Kaufman Foundation uh, to basically accelerate the rate of SBR and STTR filing. And I was very fortunate to work with uh, Mr. Nathan Preheim to establish a holding company that can file, uh, that can have a series of subsidiary companies that really are the companies we use to apply for SBR, STTR. And that came from my observation in a uh, very uh, <laughs> brief, you know, an overly long career in technology transfer to really uh, get a sense that there are a lot of projects out there, but there is often a rate limiting step of having faculty pursue, uh, you know, setting up a company. It's a lot of work. And so one of the things that we wanted to do is to have that company ready and to sort of build those relationships with the different agencies. So the service that we really do try to provide to our faculty is not just filing that SBR or STTR that you've always wanted to, but really filing the one you didn't know you wanted to file. Um, Unimed is very good at identifying projects for which there is a, a real need for translational research. And there's just not many great sources for translational research funding outside of the SBR and STTR program. And so it's really our desire to evolve that program as something that not only fosters entrepreneurship, but is also the bridge that can take an interesting discovery and essentially incubate it and foster it to be something that can be more entrepreneurial. And uh, I, I give a lot of credit to my colleague on this call, uh, Nathan Preheim, for working with us to kind of build, at least uh, out over the chasm from our edge, the, the start of that bridge and hope that it connects. Um, so most everything I was going to say has already been said way better by someone else. So I am just going to go ahead and pass the talk and stick along to whoever is next on it. Thanks again, Joe. Okay, yeah, we'll just go ahead and pass it off to, to Joe's partner in crime here, Nathan Preheim. Go ahead, Nathan, take it away. Uh, hello, folks. I'm Nathan from Proven Ventures. Very grateful for the relationship that uh, we have with uh, Tyler and Joe and everyone else at Unimed, Unitech. We're doing something a little bit differently here. And I actually think that should we pull this off, excuse me, when we pull this off, we'll be world-class on the, on the commercialization side. Um, there are a ton of bright minds uh, at both institutions, UNMC and, and, and UNO, and there's amazing intellectual property and patents that are coming out of these organizations. And what we're trying to do is um, partner up those folks with born entrepreneurs to really carry those concepts um, forward. And, and our job really is to try and find the, the best talent out there to, to do that. Over the last couple weeks, we've actually stacked two faculty uh, and have partnered them up with exceptional Founders. These are folks that are really good at taking inventions and carrying them into the, the market. And I'm, I'm real keen to see how those two companies uh, thrive. But that's just the starting point. There are five or six other inventions that are queued up that we are also sourcing uh, founders against. And I think all of you are, are aware of some of the good public funding entities out there, phase one, phase two. There are also um, new private sources of capital uh, out there and, and Proven Ventures has got a little bit of a different approach to venture investing. 
um, we employ something called revenue-based financing. So if we find a company that is solving a worthy problem, and if there is an effective team stacked against that, and if we've got a handful of proof points, then we're willing to make um, an early investment in these companies. The mechanics though that, that the employer, it's, it's a little bit different. Uh, effectively, what we're doing is we're finding companies that are worthy of, of startup loans, in a sense. We deploy capital into these, these nascent companies that have a real great trajectory for customer revenue go growth. And then we work with them to get them off the ground and, and cash flow and start to um, generate real revenue, at, at which point these companies then pay back that, that loan effectively through uh, something called revenue-based financing, where they start to peel off five, seven, eight percent of their monthly revs, effectively paying down the amount invested. They are buying back the equity that we pre-bought. What we like about this potential funding mechanism, it, it allows these companies to really focus on, on growth revenue, um, get them off the ground, become cash flow going concerns, and then they are standing on their own two feet. Um, and, and then hopefully, uh, maybe not ever needing additional capital, or if they do need more capital, they're in a much stronger footing. Um, it's very likely that one of the companies that we embedded entrepreneurial talent against uh, will be a, a candidate for this type of financing. Anyway, lots of great divergent um, themes and components uh, that we are working kind of together to aggregate into this ecosystem that I'm really, really bullish and bearish. No, I'm, I'm, I'm bullish, I'm sorry, on, on how we're going to align these factors and um, pull incredible talent inventions out of the university and then partner up with more entrepreneurs to just commercialize more. And, and the more we do that, the more feedback loops there are back to university talent that you can and should um, dream and tinker, but, but know that you're not alone and, and that there are uh, able men and women that want to join you in that effort to bring some of these concepts to market. Thank you, Nathan. Well said. Um, and happy to have you as part of this ecosystem too. Um, okay, so Q&A here. We have a few questions that are coming in. Um, one in the chat from Don Ronning. For, for Becky, I saw that you answered it in the chat. I'll let you articulate um, your answer. It's for just for anyone who hasn't noticed it. I'll read the question briefly first, Becky, and then pass it off to you. Um, so does so Don wrote, does Sharp Hub, Sharp Idea Hub have knowledge of any Omaha-based laboratory facilities that can be rented for biotech manufacturing? Um, so I'll let you answer that, Becky, and then maybe pass it off to Joe as well if you want to piggy Joe. But Becky. I also noticed that Christine had a comment there as well. But um, I just wanted to mention that on our website, the sharpideahub.com, there is a resource navigator where you can find resources similar to what you're describing for your company across the region. The region is a five state region, so it opens up a little bit, bit beyond just uh, Nebraska, but I'd suggest that you look there. And I also uh, gave you a direct contact, Don, so you can reach out and, and we can uh, see if there are people in our network we can connect you with. Fantastic, thanks, Becky. Joe, I guess if you have anything to add, if not, that's fine as well. Yeah, one thing uh, we're looking to uh, seek some external funding from the Economic Development Administration to try to fill some gaps within the ecosystem. And uh, high-end, or not high-end, but uh, pharmaceutical manufacturing is certainly one component that we've been talking to. So Don, if there's a particular business need that you would identify with that, while I may not be able to help you um, identify anything local in the short run, it would be helpful for us as information necessary to justify additional funding to be able to build that capacity. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, uh, thanks. Um, so, so, so yeah, that, that's all <clears throat> very helpful. Um, so I just wanted to thank you all for taking the time to do this. So yeah, really it, it's, um, I, I might be a little bit further along than some of the people listening. Um, 
So I just wanted to mention that, uh, so my, my company did get a, a phase one SBIR last year. Um, and so we're now waiting on, on whether the NIH decides to fund our phase two. Um, so it, it's really just a situation where we're trying to, to go beyond sort of R and D and actually start selling a product. Um, and, and say, and I'm really sort of swimming and swimming out in the ocean by myself on this. So I, I, I really do appreciate the, uh, the information you, you all are, supp are supplying this week. So thanks for that. Thank you, Don. Um, congrats on the phase one. Good luck on the phase two. <laughs> thanks. Uh, okay. Um, Anyone else want to raise a hand? Any other questions? If not, we can keep it moving. Um, I I probably just ask ask a question. question. Is that okay? Sure. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Josh. No, I had a well. I had a question for for Nathan and and Joe. I think, but it's just at the with the funding that was described. You know, um, you know, or kind of what exemplifies or defines kind of an ideal project for the for that mechanism i mean um it, I, I was just interested you know like what what types of projects would be interesting to, to this uh yeah to to this um funding project or, or what's the kind of the criteria you know high growth ventures or whatever you know like a tradi traditional kind of um venture capital approach or you know kind of what is the uh how, what does that look like i guess for for uh, for someone like me that just doesn't know? Um, that's a really good question. Um, I think that for me, the SBRS TTR is a program that's kind of somewhere between innovation and entrepreneurship, um, you know, because the emphasis isn't always on uh, immediately going to an investable or scalable venture, especially if you look at like the NIH the very nature of, of their grant review program, uh, they really encourage ambitious programs. And so, you know, at the end of a phase one, you know, I, I admire Don for his ability to get so close to market, but that's, that's atypical. Normally at a phase two, it's a further validation before you're really gonna be in a place where you're close to market. And so for us, um, a lot of the, the synthesis of, and the origin of this uh, <laughs> idea really came out of working at Unimed. And the, the archetypical programs that were always really interesting or projects that were interesting are when you know, we would have a strategic company say, well, that's great, but, you know, and then there's some impossible developmental milestone that we'd be asked to hit. And so that's kind of like, you know, NIH, SBRS, TTR, catnip, right? It, it, that's exactly the type of program that works. There's like, usually, you know, you can do a phase one, level budget proof of concept study that opens the door to a pretty heavy phase two lift that gets to some validation. You know, it's, it's usually a big idea. So if you look at our NIH projects, most of them were really big concepts that are going to be very audacious venture projects, difficult to do, I think, in a conventional venture setting. The thing I'm kind of learning, and this is one thing I've learned to appreciate in talking with Christine, is NSF is very different. They, they want to see alternative careers opening up for scientists and other technically trained people. So they really view the SBRS TTR program as a way to programmatically support the, the education and inspiration of engineers and scientists to really do some interesting entrepreneurial things. And I think Christine's program is, is incredibly effective at really instilling that aesthetic in young scientists and lawyers from a very early age. And I know in my life, I've seen it in faculty when they get really interesting technology transfer projects or graduate students when they start engaging at Unimed kind of in a, a fellowship or an internship or a role like that. And so I think to sort of uh, go back and kind of get that closer to the root, that, that's really interesting. Um, we did roadshow talks with uh, Defense Health Agency. I always go with DHA, I forget what DHA stands for. We did, we had talked with them and it was really interesting how they sort of see themselves relative to everyone else in the ecosystem. Same with Department of Energy. I think Department of Energy is actually a really interesting STTR program. And it's something that I really want to spend more time working on. 
And so I think that overall, like really what I found is that there is a certain project cultivation that's uh, it's more poetry than prose. And so really kind of learning how to line those up and sort of integrate that into the, the technology transfer apparatus at Unimed, which I think is, does an amazing job of invention fielding and evaluation. It's really just a programmatic way to provide that sort of supplemental support as it comes out. So I guess to kind of go back, I mean, I think that it's finding some way to vet projects within the ecosystem of kind of our commercialization efforts in this sort of great uh, confederation of people that are talking right now, and then really pursuing grant funding opportunities that can meaningfully advance the milestones that are sort of obvious based on where the projects start. Is that clear? It was a lot of talking, I'm sorry. Okay, moderately. Um, I just wanted to just quickly follow up. Uh, Proven Ventures is a $10 million venture debt fund. And we fully expect to make a, a good chunk of those investments into what we're calling health tech companies. I, I'm guessing anywhere between one third to one half of all the capital we invest in Nebraska through this fund will go to companies um, that I think will potentially emerge from either UNMC or UNO. Um, the way we, we sort of define the ideal project, these are what I would call tech enabled. It's not necessarily pure software or, or pure hardware, solving worthy problems with asymmetrical teams. Uh, we actually are similar to the phase one, phase two approach where we do tranche our capital. So our first checks, about 75,000, are invested in companies that have some early traction. And should they be good stewards of that capital, we can unlock another 325,000. We do have a third tranche uh, available. It's about a half a million, but that's specifically set up for those companies that are focusing more on growth than revenue. So the first two tranches are really set up, like I mentioned, as a loan where the mechanism is a, is a revenue-based financing, where as those companies become more successful, uh, they take some net cash flow, return it back to Prudent Ventures to sort of pay down that. If we see that this company is absolutely taking off like a rocket, we do have more capital to deploy. And in those situations, we would actually take that revenue uh, redemption off the table to focus much more on, on, on growth. In those cases, we actually will likely convert into equity on a, on a Series A um, event. So a little bit more information on how that sets up. And if there's anybody on the call here who has uh, a company or concept that they think would be uh, a potential candidate for that capital, I'd, I'd love to follow up with you, talk a little bit more about that. Thank you, Nathan. I see Becky has her hand. Um, is that, is that current? Is that live? You have a, you have something you'd like to add, Becky? Yeah, yes, I, I did just want to mention, because Joe uh, brought up talking to the Defense Health Agency that um, whether you're in life science or any uh, given industry, don't narrow your thinking down to the obvious agency just based on the name. So National Science Foundation basically will fund anything you can imagine, but it has to be what they call revolutionary versus evolutionary. So their, their take on it is much different than a number of the other agencies. Um, I, I worked with a company that developed products for people with disabilities and they developed a tent that could be deployed from someone in a wheelchair with a spot to store their wheelchair and you'd uh, never guess who funded that so I won't even make you it was USDA Department of Agriculture because understanding their mission part of their mission is to develop the rural environment and the the writer the company Blue Sky Design was able to make the case that this fostered the rural environment. So I think there's a, you can use a lot of creative thinking. I worked for a company called Sermotics for a number of years that got about 42 million of SBIR funding over the years. And part of the way that we did that was we had a platform technology and we found ways to fund multiple grants from multiple agencies that ran concurrently without overlapping. So there's a lot of ways to continue to use SBIR funding along with the, the sources that Nathan and Joe were talking about to continue to grow your company. And it really takes that kind of creativity to pull everything together. So, you know, don't pigeonhole yourself, give yourself some, 
some room to look at different agencies and options. That's a fantastic point, Becky. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we are getting, you know, in the last 15 minutes here, I don't see any other questions or raised hands. So I think the way we'll wrap this up is um, we'll just go back through the original order, starting again with, with Becky and BBC ETC. If you could just spend one to two, three minutes, you know, just um, kind of providing an overview of what it looks like if a faculty um, engages with you. Sure, I'm happy to do that. We actually have a, a full spectrum of services that start from the point where you aren't quite sure you want to start a company, you have an idea. And that is called the MAP, or Mentoring As uh, Assessment and Planning Program. So we can take you through that and work with Josh and other resources as well for market research to help you do customer discovery and, and determine if you really have something that has legs to take out to an SBIR or STTR. Um, once you've determined that and engaged the, um, your tech transfer office and the appropriate people at the university, then uh, we begin to work with you on, have you developed your team? Because obviously you have to have a company, that means that uh, if you wanna maintain your full-time position at the university, you're going to have to have a, a company set up with people in it at the time of awards. So, you know, we work with you to, to determine what that team is going to look like, what the project is going to look like, and which mechanism SBIR or STTR is most appropriate uh, for you to pursue. So um, it, it's an intense collaboration between the university uh, and the company that is formed to receive the proposal. Universities never receive SBIR or STTR funding. They are the subcontractor to the small business. So that's a key step that you have to look at as a uh, faculty entrepreneur, that that company has to be formed, it has to be uh, have facilities and it has to have people in it in order to pursue SBIR. Perfect, thank you, Becky. Now on to Josh. Sorry, can I yeah. interrupt just before Josh starts? This sure, Don, again. Ahead. Yeah, um, I just wanted to mention that, uh, you know, if, if people are faculty here and they do have postdocs um, regarding having people in place for SBIRs, you know, there, there's, there's absolutely no problem with having your postdoc actually be the 51% employed by your company. So I, I just wanted to mention that for, for anyone who might be in that situation who's considering that. Great point. Thanks, Don. Thank you, Don. Okay, Josh, so, so what does it look like? Can you overview what it looks like when you engage with faculty? It always, they always seem so different. So what I usually say is just send me an email and we'll have to probably set up a Zoom call and talk through where, where you're at in the process, what your goals are. I mean, I, I think, um, because I started in the Small Business Development Center piece too, is that you know, your personal goals, you know, your, your retirement plans or whatever also gets, needs to be considered in this as well. I mean, and so that's a, that's a critical piece of it um, too, is that it, it um, for me, it's, um, uh, you know, my metrics are, are, you know, SBIRs and increasing that number out of the state of Nebraska. But the, the point is too, that we're trying to get sustainable businesses that, that, you know, uh, that are built here, stay here and have, you know, um, uh, employees who you know who who then work here and, and add to the ecosystem and hopefully then seed out their own ultimately um, businesses too potentially you know and so uh, so kind of a, a it's a bit of a, a, a holistic approach I, I think in that um, yes there are um, the forming a business and you know and kind of the, the the technical aspects that that we need to talk through but I think the other piece that that then we uh, oftentimes get into as well is just you know, in terms of, do you want to um, uh, manage this business, or you know, do you want to, you know, be the, the scientist, the, the scientific officer of this business? In which case, we're going to need to find someone uh, to partner you with who can then do the the operations piece of it as well. So to really think about, um, you know, the the um, you know, kind of the, the personnel of this business too, and to, to consider that, and all, the, all things that I don't necessarily have answers about, but just to ask those key questions early on uh, because they're, they're critical considerations. So 
uh, that's where I usually just say, you know, we, we have the trainings and, and, and we have some tools and things too, and, and we work in collaboration with, with other people to provide what, what they need on kind of a, a grander scale, but then to also recognize that a lot of these conversations just need to happen kind of individually, and, and at least in the, in the current environment, a lot of times those are um, Zoom calls to kind of figure out exactly the specifics that, that people are, um, you know, what are they really maybe truly asking for, or, or what's the guidance that they, that they actually need. So I would say, you know, just start with an email and, uh, and a conversation, and then we kind of go from there. Fantastic. Thanks, Josh. And he's provided his email, I believe, in the chat. Uh, we'll also share information. Uh, so this, this, this video, this Zoom panel is being recorded. It'll be available through Unimed's website or up on, on Unimed's YouTube channel with, you know, some of these materials um, from our speakers as well as well, some contact info if they want that up there as well. Um, perfect. Okay. On to Christine. Maybe not so much just faculty, Christine, but what sort of um, opportunities are you providing through, you know, maybe STEM Trail um, for both students and faculty, and what's the best way to engage with you? Yeah, thanks. So sending an email to the UNO STEM Trail Center at UNOMaha.edu is a great one, <laughs> for sure. Um, kind of like Josh said, it's, you know, everybody has a little bit different interests, everyone has different goals, and so we certainly want to match folks based on their interest. But I will quote one of my favorite people, Miss Gwen Williams, who uh, had been one of our partners at Collective for Youth in town. And when I first met her, she was like, we never run out of students. We always need more people to support our students because I never run out of students. And so I would echo the same sentiment. We never run out of students that are looking for great learning opportunities whether that's supporting someone's business with their lab or learning how to do new things to develop their own skills, learning more about business. Um, I know sometimes the, the business-minded folks often come from a business background rather than a science background. And so the more that we can help um, connect students who have the biosciences background with uh, actual businesses, I think is a great one. And also, um, just connecting faculty, especially with Unimed, to understand more of what you all do. Um, Tyler knows this firsthand, that it's, it's sometimes intellectual property is kind of like this scary thing off in the distance that, oh, I don't think I do any of that stuff, or I don't think any of my stuff could actually be protected. Um, but, you know, as you mentioned, there are lots of brilliant folks in Nebraska coming up with great new innovations, and why not get that out for the everyone else to use, whether they're in Nebraska or outside of Nebraska. So that's probably our primary way of uh, interacting with folks. Thanks. Thank you, Christine. Um, and last but not least, we'll pass it off to Joe and then Nathan. Um, so please, you to share, you know, what it looks like for faculty to engage with you, both at Unitech and through this Kauffman Foundation grant and then Proven Ventures. Well, maybe, uh, with uh thank you it's always nice to have a, a partner on these maybe it'd be good for me to talk kind of on the faculty end and then i'll pass it off to nathan and he can talk about what happens afterwards um so really what we're oriented towards is uh, for faculty that really do want to participate in the sbrs ttr program but are less motivated to form their own corporate entity and so if you want to do sbrs ttr but have been uh hesitant to work uh, to sort of set up your own company or feel as though that's not necessarily uh, where your heart's taking you if there's just a real emphasis to, to use that program. Um, and I think one of the things to keep in mind is that SBRS TTR is not just more research funding. It's essentially a, a transition from more hypothesis driven science to more experimental science that actually develops a project. And, and that is a very different kettle of fish. And so our emphasis in working with faculty from Unitech's point of view is to really challenge uh, the, the underlying research process to really add value, to achieve milestones, to take intellectual property that is already identified and present in Unimed, or to do research to develop new and interesting intellectual property. It's, it's very much focused on a value add for the great work that, that Tyler and his colleagues do at Unimed. Um, but that's not the end of it. You know, part of the reason why I wanted to partner with, with Nathan, um, in addition to him being one of the few people who will return my phone calls, um, is that he is uh, really focused on 
what happens after that. And I think that that's one vexing problem with SBRSDTR because it is so research focused, it's often easy to lose the forest in the tree for the trees. And I do that, right? Like I, I spend a lot of time thinking, how do we validate it? How do we control for it? How do we design this research protocol? I'm very fortunate to have a partner to work with whose emphasis is much more on, you know, what happens afterwards. And Nathan is, is a really interesting person and a real asset for this community because he's lived it. He has been in equity finance startups. He has been in projects that have gone really well and other projects. And so I think that because he has that life experience, he has that base of knowledge that kind of infuses projects, you know, from our inception. Nathan's involved in sort of seeing these projects as they're written up for SBR as TTR and sort of they're on his radar as to kind of what to do thereafter. So maybe it'd be best to, to turn it over to Nathan at that point since I've talked about him so much. Yeah, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, thanks again for the opportunity today. Um, sometimes we're, we, in, the, in this opportunity, we're getting solutions and, and it's our job to figure out what problems do those solutions actually, actually solve. And the kind of the holy grail is something called product market fit. And while there are uh, sometimes innovators that can cross the chasm as entrepreneurs, oftentimes it's a completely different skill set. And he or she that creates the IP is oftentimes not the best candidate to run it forward. Um, so what a, what a great opportunity here to, to partner up. Um, I, I think starting up is absolutely a, a team sport. It, it probably takes a minimum of, of two. And so the good news here for, for you folks that uh, have these things that you've discovered, let's, let's figure out how we can match make, uh, identify um, counterparts to help bring this out into, into the world. Um, you know, th there was a story last week, Quibi. Quibi raised about $2 billion um, and, and they shut down within six months. And um, wow, that's a, it's kind of a tragedy. So much capital was raised and so much capital was, was blown and it didn't really have to be that way. There are, there are clever ways to sort of figure out what the invention is worth in the market um, before investing and deploying in, in that kind of resource, that kind of capital. Uh, and, and, and we would be honored to, to, help, to help do that with, with you and your, your invention. But um, Brave New World, I mentioned that the components are there. I fully expect that we're going to get very, very, very good at this. Um, success breeds success. So hope I have a chance to work with everyone on this call someday. Thanks, Joe and Nathan. Uh, with that, I think I put up a few minutes early. Um, I'm not seeing any last second questions. So yeah, thanks again to all of our, our Hi, panelists. This was fantastic, we really appreciate it. Don, sorry, you wanna chime in with something? Yeah, I have one more question, and this is this is something that you know, as a faculty, I'm always concerned about. So, uh, conflict of interest with companies, uh, particularly regarding STTRs, um, are there anything that we need to be concerned about, particularly if we are trying to transition technology from our academic lab to uh, to our own company? Are is, is the, does the university have anyone with expertise regarding that, or does anyone in the panel have expertise regarding defining conflict of interest in that case? Yeah, it's a good question, Don. Um, there's probably a few participants going through the list here who could answer that question pretty well. Yeah, so, so, so the university does have expertise in, uh, for faculty in helping handle conflict of interest. Um, and so you, you can just search your, your conflict of interest um, officer at, at, at your campus. Um, you can reach out to me at Unimed, um, Joe at Unitech for sure, um, for, for help on that as well. Um, the, yeah, it's, so it is something that, that does need to be appropriately managed. It's a great point, Don, um, but it's something that we have a, a lot of experience helping faculty manage. Um, okay, so that's fantastic. Thanks, Don, for that last great question. Um, with that, let's let's thank our, our panelists here virtually um, one more time. Um, and I'll just, just a quick reminder: this this recording will be up on Unimed's YouTube channel. You can find a link to that probably through Unimed's. Hey, awesome! We got some some clap going there. That's great. 
<laughs> Round of applause. Um, yeah, so you'll be able to find this on our website or on our YouTube channel. And um, thanks everyone for joining. And just a quick reminder, we have uh, every day, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday this week, we'll have more panels like this. Um, so please, please stop on by again. Hopefully see all of you again tomorrow. Thank you.